Hey everybody, welcome to the Zimbabwe Independence Online Festival 2023. We're so excited to be coming back to you with our annual online festival. A big shout out to our main sponsor, Putanda. I always make sure that we celebrate this independent in style every year. And this year, this is our fourth edition. We have been faithful to bring you this online festival the past three years. And today we celebrate the fourth year. And of course, we say happy birthday to Zimbabwe. To open the festival, it's our tradition every year to have a little discussion about what's happening in Zimbabwe, what's going on, as well as the love that we all share uh, in Zimbabwe. And today we have a special a panel with amazing, amazing people. Of course, a big shout out to all the viewers that are watching this. Please remember to like, share, and comment your views as well in our comment section. And guys, don't go anywhere because straight after this discussion, we're going to have a little interval and we're going into the main concert, which we have four exciting artists. Carmen, which is an amazing musical. And then we have Kunaka, all the way from the US, the Kunaka Marimba Band. And we have the Mafuleni family. You don't want to miss the Mafuleni family. And this year, we also first on the Kutandara stage, on the Reliance stage, we have the Ngoma Ekwedu. So that's going to be awesome. Don't go anywhere. Just take an interval, get a glass of wine, and come back and join us. But my job was just to open and to say a big thank you on behalf of the Kutandara board, as well as our directors, Randy and Amy McIntosh, and to now hand over. This year, we have a special um, chair, someone who's holding and running the discussion. I'm also just participating, so that's super exciting. And so they will introduce the guests that we have today and take over from now on. Otherwise, keep on enjoying this. But we need to online festival. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tatenda, and uh, I'm so excited to be in this panel. Uh, we have Amy McIntosh, we have Randy McIntosh, we have Blessing Ooh. Chimanga, and we have Tafi Matsure on the panel. So we're just uh, going to have a little discussion around uh, the independence of Zimbabwe. Today we're celebrating a birthday, the birthday of Zimbabwe. And um, we're so excited to just share a little bit um, of what's going on in Zimbabwe, the culture, the music. So to kick off the, the discussion, I'm just going to go straight to Amy and um, just ask a few questions and have everyone join in as we discuss. Um, so to you, Amy, um, just tell us briefly, you've been in and out of Zimbabwe for a couple of years now, and uh, we just want to know what, uh, what has inspired you about Zimbabwe? What excites you to keep on coming year in, year out, like you do? Um, what exactly inspires you about Zimbabwe? Wow, that's such a big question. Um, you know, I first traveled to Zimbabwe in 2001 with Randy, and we had wow. both already been de deeply fallen in love with Zimbabwean music, especially Mbira, but also um, pop artists like Oliver Mutukudzi and Thomas Mopfumo and Alec Macheso. And when we first traveled to Zimbabwe, we met so many amazing, kind, loving people. It's really the people that keep us coming back to Zimbabwe again and again, the friendships that we have, the relationships that we have. Of course, the music touches us so deeply, uh, but the friendships that we've formed with you and others there keep us wanting to come back and and visit and have our lives intertwined with yours oh great and um randy you've also you been with amy year in and year out do you want to share with us what inspires you what excites you about zimbabwe <laughs> hello good to see you again tatenda good can to you see hear you me too. yes i can okay well um I'm, I'm going to agree with Amy and say more than anything, it's the relationships and the people that we connect with while we're in Zimbabwe and that we collaborate with 
musically that make us come back over and over again. It's so inspiring to be with such like-minded people and to be woven into the same cloth. And I understand that you've adopted a, a totem. <laughs> oh, yes. You are a diva, right? <laughs> diva, that's right. That's yes, my totem. And, uh, uh, how did you come about it? How, how did it, um, how did you connect with this? And uh, how important is it to you uh, regarding that uh, Zimbabweans, um, uh, I country or uh, people who um, who see totems as something that is special that connects with them and to you, how important is it to be called a diva? What connection do you have with the <laughs> diva? <laughs> okay. Um, well, wow, that's a pretty deep question. You just went deep right away. Just go right <laughs> into the totem. You know, in America, we don't have totems, or most of us don't. Uh, but all of us have come from somewhere, and most of us don't even know really where we came from. Um, some of me, I came from Scotland and Ireland and Norway and England but I don't really know much more than that. It's what um, I've related to with my community here. And through this music, um, you know, one year I, we were working with some Mbira players from Maungira Enarira and um, we were doing a performance with them, and I figured out a way to play um, marimba music, and we get a crowd going. And then I'd say, now let's listen to the real heroes of this music, and we bring these guys who played Mbira. And the Mbira was a lot quieter, but if we drew the audience in through the marimbas, then we'd have them engaged for a little while and they play a little bit of music and then we play again and then they play. And uh, this is when I met Jacob Mafulani and there were two other guys, they were both named Tonde. And I don't know their last names. I just remember them as Tonde one and Tonde two. But all <laughs> three of them were the Mukanya totem. And they said, Rendi, you act like Mukanya. You are always running around thinking about how you can do things differently. And we want you to never change, but we will give you the Mukanya totem. And so I proudly took on the Mukanya totem. And still to this day, people in Zimbabwe call me Mukanya. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, um, that's but, nice. there's, but there's more because you know yeah. he's Ziva. Yes. So yeah. what happened next, Randy? Um, well, what happened next is a long story that I can shortly cut to the chase and say I was in a ceremony and my ancestors said, we love that you're trying to connect with your ancestors through your beard and through your totem, but your totem is not Mukanya. You come from the big water, Ziva Guru. Oh. And so to get more closely connected with my ancestors, who have the beard like me, I yeah. have taken on Ziva Guru or Ziva. Oh, wow. Wow. And um, let's hear from other Zimbabweans. <laughs> okay, Tuffy. good. Hi, Tommy. Hey. What's up? <laughs> I'm good. 
and um you are a shama yep. <laughs> still on the issue of totem uh i understand and i haven't seen you my you. sister in a long time ah <laughs> i missed you eh yeah <laughs> boy here i'm so i was <laughs> i'm fine so i was saying on this panel it's you and me and amy where the shavas <laughs> on this panel the morphus <laughs> yeah that's what's up <laughs> yeah so um i was just going to ask you uh how important uh, the zimbabwean culture is to you and um regarding that uh the legends um before us before you and me uh have been successful in holding the torch up we talk of the magayas uh who have been who we know that uh, they have done a great job in uh, raising the flag of zimbabwe through our culture and music the mbira the marimbas how important is it to you as a zimbabwean so um not only is my zimbabwean culture um Um, a source of identity it is also a source of belonging um it includes various um ingredients which include music and lifestyle and fashion which are some of the things that i as a zimbabwean citizen i'm really proud of because we have a unique taste when it comes to all of that um we also um try in as much as possible to spread good vibes we are known um in most parts of our country to be very peaceful we do not like to fight we are very peace loving people um it's something that i am really really proud of and looking at other legends um like the legendary efatum juru dr marere ma um cosmos magaya mention a few um they have played um a very good role in terms of trying to preserve this culture that is beautified with music um they have tried to put um this music into educational facilities and that has become a lifestyle and also has become um a showbiz especially for some zimbabwean musicians who play marimba and mbira who basically do mbira music We have so many good musicians like Mary Anibal, the Mafulenis, who you're going to see later tonight. Um, everybody who plays a part in the showbiz industry has something to say about these great legends. Um, not to mention Thomas Mopumo. We all know this guy. And everybody mentions him every time we talk about Bira music, which is something that I really feel like people have worked really hard in order to make. be the ambassadors of Zimbabwe through music in representing culture and music in portraying culture yeah wow that's powerful and um just to mention that we are so proud of you for taking the torch and running with it um through music and uh, just upholding up upholding the culture of uh, of Zimbabwe Thank you so much for being that person and taking it to uh, Bled. I Bled. Now you're the touring artist. <laughs> and um you've gone around the world uh, playing marimba and um just trying to uphold the culture of Zimbabwe and just spreading it across. And uh how has it been for you and how important is um our culture um when you go out there you know people uh tend to divert or they try to fit in other cultures but you have been going around with your marimba with african music and playing it out there how has it been uh well thank you um for having me on the panel and um Shout out to everybody that has spoken before me. Um, I think I've done my best, and I'm still doing my best in um, in being an ambassador of the country and the culture globally. <laughs> uh, 
super grateful I get these opportunities to travel a lot. Um, being around Africa, around Asia, um, and the US. And I think the thing that's the most I've learned from those trips has been just keeping your identity and keeping who you are. What actually sells us is not really the culture. What sells us is the identity. And then the identity becomes what we believe in and where we are coming from and so forth. So that's why I've not debated my music from, you know, changing the um, um, the songs to a language that fits the country that I'm going to. I've kept it the way it is because that is, they they buy into that. Um, and then in relation to Zimbabwean culture, I think the marimba has been what I connected with. I'm not saying I didn't connect with the Mbira, but I connected a lot more with the marimba and that became my bread and butter, that became the asset for my um, traveling. So um i think that has helped me a lot to even understand the culture i didn't understand the culture that much having born in a very christian family i was very um narrow-minded to what the Zimbabwean culture is because of uh, the religion but i think the instrument has helped me to then interact more and actually not have any issues with anybody that believes in um, the deep culture side of, 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 of the music or what the music does and all that stuff. I've been very adaptive as well as learning. Uh, and then at the end of the day, realize that it's just also the same language. You know, either you are a Christian, Hinduism, Muslim, um, um, deep cultural person. At the end of the day, the music plays and it sings and talks a language that is universal. So. Um, I think the instrument marimba has actually helped me to connect and, and learn. Um, if I say connect, maybe I'm being too um, diplomatic, but it has made me learn my culture. It has made me dig deep because I've had to listen to the different sounds. I've had to collaborate with the different artists that are deeply rooted in what you call culture. Um, yeah, but out there, they've received it as raw as it comes, as deep as it comes not too awkward orchestrated yeah oh, wow and i've seen amy i've seen you play the marimba <laughs> and the mbira <laughs> that has been um for me the first time i saw you guys playing uh the Gutandari team it was just so amazing i was like okay how did these guys get to sit down and learn the marimba the mbira and yet we, the Zimbabweans, as for me, <laughs> I'm still trying <laughs> to learn. I had a few lessons with blessing, but then how did you guys really learn and just to have the love of the instrument so that you just take it and go with it to America and start playing it there? Yeah, I mean, it's such a funny story because people think that we learned in Zimbabwe, but we actually learned in the US with oh other God. with other americans who also loved zimbabwean music and marimba like there's just something about about the music that if it touches you it touches you it doesn't matter the color of your skin it doesn't matter you know from from which country you come um i i had many long talks with sekuru kosmas magaya before he passed away about this topic like is it okay that i love this music is it okay that i play this music and he just told me time and time again over many years many, actually two decades that the music has the music chooses and so i feel like the music chose me and so it's my job to do the best i can do to represent it and to help spread it and to stay connected to Zimbabwe and to the Zimbabwean people. And I mean, I think that's why I feel like my relationships are are so important because if I don't have those relationships with you guys, like what do I have, you know? The music didn't, it didn't come from where where I come from. Like Randy was saying, our, our ancestors come from Northern Europe and I didn't fall in love with that music. I don't know why. But what is it like for you, Tatanda, to see like someone with my skin, like playing music from where you're from? Like, what is that like for you? Oh my God. I was like, you know, Tatanda, what are you doing? You know, people from America falling in love with 
your culture, your instrument, and <laughs> you're not doing enough just to learn the instrument and just to study it. And it's so amazing when we see you guys playing it with so much passion and um, so much love for it. Like I've seen you do it. I've seen the team, you and the team, so much into it. And when you come, the Zimbabweans are always stunned and just looking at you and like, what? <laughs> so it's so amazing. And um, I'd really want to do more um, as a Zimbabwean, you know, just to interact more with our instruments and how we go about it. And yeah, <laughs> I feel so much left out because <laughs> I haven't been doing much. But I promise you when you come, I'll play you some marimba. <laughs> okay, let's make a deal that when the five of us are in Zimbabwe in July, we're playing music together. Yes. Including I'll be playing the whole, <laughs> playing the whole show. show. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So it's been fun having you guys on the panel. It's been fun having to talk about Zimbabwe and celebrating. Um, Zimbabwe's birthday today and uh, thank you guys for watching those who are watching thank you so much for coming through and just uh, hearing us talking about Zimbabwean culture music and uh, how we've all connected to it so thank you everyone on the panel Amy thank you Randy thank you so much Taffy and Blessing thank you so much it has been wonderful having you guys